if you're a Magic the Gathering fan, don't touch anything, don't say anything, don't jinx it, but we have a standard Magic the Gathering release that's absolutely popping off, and it's got a play booster in it! Yeah, this set is going crazy. We have Outlaws of Thunder Junction pre-release information, so I want to talk about those numbers, why this set is doing so well, and a trend happening with Outlaws that we have not seen since the last massively successful standard Magic the Gathering release. we got a lot to talk about today. Let's get into it. To say we were skeptical about the Magic the Gathering cowboy hat crossover, I think would be the understatement of the century. But Outlaws of Thunder Junction is hitting us right where we need. We are getting some incredible cards that we are proving that we just want to slam in a bunch of decks. We have a bunch of subsets that, while I think it's just too many subsets, we should just put these things in one set. They are packed full of cardboard goodness. And the sealed products, something that normally always tanks with Magic the Gathering releases, are not only stable, but doing extremely well. We're gonna talk about all of that today, and we are going to use the TCG player sales data. That's right, that's what we do here. We track every single sold listing of sealed product from TCG player. We add it to the data vault, and we use that in our analysis to help us know how regular people like us are spending our hard-earned money. If you like uh, kind of opinions in Magic the Gathering, conversations backed by information like this make sure you're subscribed to the channel we are racing to 8500 subs thank you so much for hanging out without further ado it's time to take a look at outlaws of thunder junction and to do that we have to head over to cardboardfinance.com this is an application built by right here by me at hometown tcg and supported by the channel members it's five bucks a month you get discounts on box opening a bunch of extra perks so make sure you check that out and help support cardboard finance Dot com, but without digging too deep into a comparison of every set going by, because, you know, this is one single video, we're going to have more videos about Thunder Junction on the channel, but the sales for Outlaws of Thunder Junction are looking extremely healthy. As of this recording, or the recording of this video, I don't know why I said that so weird, the recording of this video, we have 10,202 boxes sold, and it is led by the collector booster box. Now, this is kind of to be expected as we saw a massive sale with collector booster boxes, or what we thought was a massive sale of collector booster boxes on TCG Player at $199.99 from, you guessed it, the banana stand, who apparently is a real LGS and not a distributor. So big shout out to the banana stand for moving that much product. That's kind of crazy. But we saw that sale happen, so it makes sense that the collector booster box is the best-selling product. But it is followed by a product that, to say that we have not been high on in the one iteration that it's been around, around would be a massive understatement. The Play Booster Box, slotting in at number two on this list, is a bit mind-blowing to me, especially given the price of the Play Booster Box. We're talking about that later in this video, so make sure you stay tuned, because that, that just blew my mind. But without getting too deep into that, having that number two in this slot here just shows that people want to get their hands on these cards. Yes, Magic the Gathering fans open packs to put cards in their decks and play Magic the Gathering. Not everybody buys singles. Some people use the play booster box to play limited. Some people use it to, you know, just crack packs and get cards into their collection. And that is the big benefit of something like the play booster way back when when i made a video about the announcement of play boosters how i was going to evaluate them and why i was excited for play boosters it was that versatility that drove most of my excitement now if you've been around the channel for a while you can let me know in the comment section that you've heard this before but I understand the price of play boosters is a problem. In fact, the price that Wizards of the Coast charges our game stores for Magic the Gathering products is is it's just it's a broken model. It's wrong. It does not work. I am not saying that play booster boxes and their prices are perfect, but this is where we exist, so without diving too far into that specific problem, I think the Play Booster here is really showing out. And the Play Booster box is selling in healthy numbers up to and through pre-release from the number of boxes sold to the average price of the box sold on TCG Player. We're seeing the Play Booster shine in ways that it hadn't before. But the unsung hero in most of these releases and most of the the standard products that come out has been for a while the commander decks and let's take a look at the commander deck sell-through rate the commander decks are popping 
off. And this just goes to show having a four pack of decks to support your biggest format. Yeah, EDH Commander is the biggest Magic Gathering format. You cannot convince me otherwise, even though I'm not a massive fan of it. I don't like it as an intro product. And, you know, frankly, I like to play Magic in other ways. I think I'm going to stream a bunch of Outlaws of Thunder Junction on Arena when it comes out when, you know, late at night when I got nothing else to do. So make sure you tune in for that. But I really appreciate that these products are popping off. They get cards into people's hands, and it's just a in-the-box, out-of-the-box play experience. So I love everything going on with this product, but we have seen products with this before. Heck, uh, Karlov Manor was a set that, you know, it has sold not as many boxes, but had a massive play booster sale to compensate. Shout out MVP Sports and Games. And... We're not seeing that impressive of numbers considering how long the set has been out. And it's had all the same products. So why are we seeing a bit more hype for Thunder Junction than we are for something like Karloff Manor? And that's a really big question. And to dig into that, I want to take a look at some of the most expensive things that are in Outlaws of Thunder Junction for people, you know, like you and I getting out there and kind of cracking packs and some of the best selling things and why we've achieved some of the butter zone-ness here with Outlaws of Thunder Junction. We know from history, just from looking at Magic the Gathering releases in the past that not only theme, but something like, uh, let's find Lord of the Rings here. Something like Lord of the Rings, a lot of the sales are driven by the concept that you can pull fancy, crazy things out of these boxes. Heck, Lord of the Rings is selling still to this day a ton of boxes every single month, bringing in a ton of money. And even something like Commander Masters that was... Well, it was otherwise deemed too expensive. It was not nearly as successful as it could have or should have been. It's still doing extremely well because of the value of the cards in the box, even commanding a higher price point. And we see a lot of that juice here in Thunder Junction. Things like the textured foils from the big score. We've got uh, the breaking news cards. I always want to call it the vault. And I, I said this on my live stream that I do every single Friday morning. So shout out if you caught that. But this just gives me major Borderlands vibes. This whole set just gives me massive Borderlands vibes. But we see, you know, breaking news, the big score, the vault, whatever, you know, that's just what I want to call it. Really carrying a lot of these high value cards, giving people the opportunity to open something that just blows them away and they get really surprised by or, or proud of. And that's that's big for Magic the Gathering. But also in the past, we've set, seen sets only driven by this. Crazy, hardcore, expensive card, nothing else in the product. They don't necessarily do well. So while we are seeing valuable reprints, we are seeing textured foils that people are chasing down, we are seeing collector booster boxes selling, we are also seeing cards from the regular set in what I consider our butter zone, our are you know four to three to five to fifteen dollar price point so like anywhere from three to fifteen dollars those cards where it's like oh this isn't a hit but every time i open one i hear a little ka go off i get a little value into my collection not necessarily like oh financial freedom stability investing ching but like oh look i can do i can play this card in a bunch of different decks i don't have to seek it out and buy it or trade for it it's a valuable piece to add to my collection to either collect or use we see a ton of that happening here with outlaws of thunder junction and that is incredible now we are still in pre-release some of these prices may fall but as cards hit the meta we are seeing almost as often things spike up in price or kind of come around and people be surprised by them and while a lot of these cards are extremely fun extremely powerful I do think that the having that meat on the bone, having cards that you can add to these decks and to your collection in that in that price point is extremely valuable. And we see a ton of that here in the best selling. I mean, heck, even moving on to page two of the best selling. And I, I, looking at we got fast lands right here. We have a bird rogue that's just popping off. So stuff like this is extremely fun. I love to see where this is going. Also, spoiler alert, I think Tiny Bones joins up is going up in price. I really like this card. I think it's a lot of fun, especially if you're trying to commit crimes. This is really cool. But the unsung hero of this product that we have not seen so far in a Magic the Gathering release is the stability offered by the play booster box really led by the everything we've talked about the cards that are playable some of the chase cards yes i know not a lot of those chase cards aren't available in the places i understand but the 
versatility here combined with the rest of those factors is really driving this product to not only hold a great value on the secondary market, but also ex an extremely healthy sell-through rate as we constantly move this product. And this is what you want with a standard Magic the Gathering release. This is that sweet spot where the box that is meant to be played with comes out and Magic fans buy it to play with the box. Enough of this structured fake scarcity enough of this is it's highly limited printing shout out fallout collector decks uh, or collector boxes sorry not collector decks enough of that i want good products to thrive by being good products and we have seen that before right we look at something like Lost Caverns of Ixalan. It's a great example where we have wonderful products like the set booster box in this release selling in extremely healthy numbers without a crazy sale, without any kind of off kilter TCG promotion and doing so at a healthy price. As we dig into something like the set booster box and we see like, look, this thing constantly selling at, you know, around the 120s, 122s, even months past release. This is the magic that is Magic the Gathering and good Magic the Gathering products, in my opinion. I love to see this. I think this is great for the health and future of our game, and I think stuff like this should make us extremely excited. Now, saying all that, we need to fix the model. Stop charging game stores so much money for Magic. Like, I, I understand we can't have $100 booster boxes of Magic the Gathering. I, I get that. I understand. This is... Dude, what you're charging stores is too much. Like, I don't want to get down that rabbit hole again right now. We, I feel like we do it every week, but it's too much. But most importantly, I, as a Magic fan, am so excited for Outlaws of Thunder Junction. I can't wait to dig in. I'm going to play some arena, like I said. Make sure you turn on make, turn on some notifications. Watch out for live streams. I might, like, randomly uh, chat with the people in the Discord, which you can join for free. And there's, there's a bunch of links now with this channel. This channel's grown so crazy. There's so many links. So you get it. There are links. You can hang out. You can find them there on every video. But I really am excited to play with some of these cards. I think, you know, the opportunity to build new decks and try new things is some of the most fun you can have in Magic the Gathering. And you can do it. It's my mission. I'm going to... Bound and determined to prove you can do it without it just being commander. You can have fun playing standard too. Like that's totally allowed. Anyway, until next time, thank you so much for hanging out. Make sure you share this video anywhere you have conversations about Magic the Gathering discussions. If you want to talk about Thunder Junction or you want to get people in some group to roast me, that's totally fine too. Thank you so much for hanging out. Until next time, you guys know me. My name is Josh and I will see you in the wild, wild west that is Outlaws of Thunder Junction. That outro felt unnatural, but you know what? I'm here. I'm sticking with it. We're going with it. All right, bye.